Hi all, in this video I want to talk about uh, how you can deploy Spring Boot application, Spring Boot uh, project uh, to Google uh, Cloud Platform, specifically using Cloud Run and Cloud Build services. Um, so we will take a look uh, to the Docker file that you need to have uh, in your project, uh, Cloud Run configuration, Cloud Build configuration, and in, in addition we will also use GitHub connection uh, to deploy our application. So what I have here, I have um, a sim I mean, for now it's a simple uh, Spring Boot application uh, in which I have a Docker file. So it is important to note that uh, you can also deploy without a Docker file. You can deploy a raw uh, Spring Boot application, uh, but I chose to go with a Docker file. And, and then also I have a specific Docker file in which I have um, a two-step uh, uh, like configuration. In, in the first one, I uh, I prepare a build, so I build also within Docker file, um, and then and also I prepare a runnable application also within Docker file. Um, I, I just know that I have also error here. It should be eight 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 zero because I changed a port for my application, but it's a minor detail. Um, so once you have this Docker file, uh, what you need to do, um, obviously you need to have a GCP account. Uh, for now, I am using a like demo, like a demo account uh, with some uh, free credits. Uh, you can also do the same. Uh, and in which I have a service. So this which, this is created by using this button here, create service. And to be honest, it's really straightforward uh, configuration. So let me just show uh, what I have. Um, so in, in so when so you, like how it works, you have a service and also a build. So that's why when I clicked on service, it it uh, navigated me to the um, deployment. I can also edit service itself. So how it works in service, you configure. A, a deployable application uh, in which you also set up like a domain for this application, uh, run configuration, things like how many instances, how many CPU, etc., etc. So this is like very simple approach of uh, of deploying uh, an application. For example, like I'm, I'm comparing to like Kubernetes deployment. So in this one, you just do everything on UI. Uh, you can also set up a region. I by default I use global region. So there is some consequences uh, when you choose another region. For example. I was also trying to use a uh, second generation GitHub configuration, like GitHub connection, which doesn't work in all environments. So I, I for now, I stick to the global uh, uh, region. So let's first take a look. So both deployments and, and service configuration is important. So now uh, this is my like uh, service configuration. It's very basic, very default values. For example, in CPU, I say I don't need always allocated service. And then consequence of this is when you run, for example, here, so when I refresh, so now it is running. But like if I refresh after some time, uh, there is also like probably threshold where you can configure this. Uh, so it will take a bit longer time because there is no instance running instance. So uh, GCP will first bootstrap, start a new instance, and then uh, execute your request. But if you already executed it, so it is quite instant. Um, so you can also configure this in a service configuration, right? So you can say, I always need a, an allocated CPU, an allocated instance. Um, so remaining is also quite uh, straightforward. I also enable access, like direct access to the service. Uh, that's why I can just run this request, right? There is no authentication required at the moment. Um, so I also have, as you can see, a domain, uh, attached domain. This is also can be done through the UI. You will need to have access to your DNS settings because it will ask you to for some uh, modifications. Uh, but this is where you configure it. Uh, so for me, it is uh, api.nest.appbuzzer.com. This domain is, is, is also like... It's a bit easier because this domain is also managed by Google. Uh, it automatically detects it. You can also add extend domains, add domains. And then uh, you will need to have CNAME in your domain settings to, uh, so this will uh, automatically route it. 
but you don't have to have this because by default GCP will allocate a kind of random uh, URL which you can also use to access your service so it is exact same uh, application so ping pong and I should get the same response so this is like service level configuration but more important thing here is your deployment configuration which is for which you need to navigate to not cloud run but cloud build when you do create a new service uh, let me just take uh, show it it will give you option to uh, to do it from here so you will have to have uh, set up a new cloud build uh, so let's take a look how it looks like so here I have um, I have a build or trigger you can give a custom name uh, region is also global so this is all custom setting like automatic settings I didn't change anything here one part that you can uh, configure is uh, so whenever I have a new uh, change on my branch this will trigger this deployment this this build source this is most important part probably so you will need to connect your github and then specify uh, a branch this is done through this part here the repositories so in cloud build repositories you need to add uh, a repository um, and th this is an important step because you will have to if you said github you will have to give your account access to your github uh, i am using a org profile in github so this is for me a puzzle and then nest server that's why um, i have to give access to a puzzle and then uh, it can see my uh, um here are my stories and then i can pick it up when i set up a new build so this is where you set this uh, this like where you, you select this uh, but first you need to add your request stories here um also don't confuse this first and second by default it's a first generation um i think this is most used configuration uh second generation this is also something i will test but this is like in this configuration you can have uh all this setup also with terraform uh, and then for this you will need to, you need to use a second generation but I didn't test it yet so I will check it later so uh, when you have this uh, build uh, configuration um, so important steps are what you are building so when you set up you can select docker file uh, but this is like now when I see it it's a cloud build configuration so this is also a very important step because this is actually this this code here this yaml file here is actually what is deploying your uh, your project so we can also take a look to this file here this is mostly generated by gcp you don't have to do anything here um so for example like these settings are pasted or or, or generated by uh, gcp itself i try to do some additional some custom additions for example when i deploy i want to see it in uh in environments like in this part here so if i go back to the repository so when I deploy, I want to see it here. Uh, I didn't make it uh, work for now, but this is something I will also try to address. But for this, I added like some custom configuration. I also added some secret manager settings so I can keep a uh, GitHub token uh, on this uh, secret manager. But you don't have to do this. If you just want to deploy with a Docker file, you need to have Docker file, and then it's all UI uh, configuration. So and then this part will be automatically uh, set up for you. Um, so variables are also generated by GCP when you do it first time. Um, so this is important step. So if you want to see, like in my case, if you want to see uh, deployment status here, uh, you will have to click or enable this, this settings. And then, then you will see uh, uh, stats of deployment and also if you go in, in details, you will see log of the deployment. Um, this is nice feature to have. So this is here. So this is my, my own uh, action and this is generated by GCP. Um, so, and then, then when you have uh, all this configuration, uh, again, this is quite straightforward. You do it by uh, UI step-by-step. Step. Uh, we can also do take a look to the, like some um, simple setup so this is where you select the story as you can see it already populated all, all settings and when you have auto detected this will also do the re remaining part of the work 
uh, and then, then you will have uh, automatic deployment. Um, you can also say, I don't want this, I want a Docker file, and then, then you can specify where this Docker file is. This is what I did as a first step, and this will also generate for you um, this uh, uh, what's a cloud build configuration file. So basically this file. Okay, so when we have this configuration, so I want to also show how this works. Let's go to application part. I will make very simple change. Let's say it is the five. Um, and then let me trigger the build. So triggering the build is, so this, this command here is, is, is just adding um, a commit, JIT commit and push. So I use very, uh, um, so for my private pro projects, I use like any uh, commit message. I don't care about commit messages. Um, and then this will, if I go back to the server uh, uh, repository and refresh, this will trigger a build here. And then if I go to the history of builds, this will also generate a new build here. And then if you go inside, you will see all the steps. So those steps are steps in this cloud build uh, configuration file. Again, it will be generated by default, but you can extend it as in as I did in my case. So this is this is the name I gave to this step, and it's also shown here. So this will uh, do all steps one by one uh, and send all logs to the GitHub. So like in, in, in a big picture, from big picture perspective, all you need to do is uh, to connect your GitHub account, GitHub repository, create a build and service, and, and then it will work. So one uh, detail that you need to pay attention. So right now I don't have, let me get to the presentation mode. So I, right now I don't have um, I don't have any database con connection, right? So I had to disable my database settings so this works because if I have uh, let me show what I mean by this. So if I go to application YAML, so in my application I actually have a database configuration, some uh, tables, some entity models, etc. But for now, I am disabling this and keeping only the raw um, um, uh, Spring Boot application so I can run it without any dependency. So next step that I will also share as another video will be actually enabling this and giving access to the database. And this is also done by um, uh, these configurations here. So I can enable, for example, Postgres uh, for this service, and then, then um, and then this con configuration for Postgres will be propagated to my application, so I can deploy, run, and then link application with the database. But since I don't have this now, I had to disable this. So when I have a database on my GCP, you will have to enable this, and this is actually quite usual. Even if you deploy to any, like let's say Heroku, you will have the same. You will have to have a database, so you can run your application um, and then build application and so it can work with a database in the cloud so it cannot work in the base database in your local right so you i mean technically you can make it work but but this is not a good approach that's why for now it's a, it's a only um uh, only spring boot application without any uh external service dependency obviously i have other things in my phone, like on my dependency file, but everything related to database, uh, liquid base, uh, etc., etc., they are disabled. Uh, second uh, item to pay attention is Docker file. So, this is a very important step. And as you can see, you need to build also. I mean, we, if you want to follow the same uh, approach, you will need to also build your application and then copy paste your jar file. Otherwise, if you just have a jar file, then you will have to add additional configuration in your uh, GCP to manage like copy pass uh, jar file from one place to another place. That's why I prefer deploying with image, Docker image, because I can do everything in a within Docker image. And as an output, I have a, a runnable Docker image with an already prepared uh, service within the, within the image. But uh, I will, um, so like from now, I will try to connect with database uh, which will be also another tutorial and also i will try to make this integration with github a bit more advanced 
but for now that's it so if you want to uh, follow this same um, you can use like this docker file and also cloud build configuration i will put all links in the description and then thanks for watching